kind of a weird angle. I'm trying to get the glare off the screen. This will be a short one anyway. I, um, I'm going to wrap up. We're wrapping up People April. I had a two-volume biography of Charlotte Bronte to read. I only finished uh, volume one today. I was hoping to get the whole thing done, but I'll just do a review of volume one. I'm going to read volume two tonight. This was written by Elizabeth Gaskell, the, the well-known novelist, not as well-known as Charlotte Bronte, of course, but they were friends. And so she wrote this after Charlotte's death, her young death. And you can certainly tell that Gaskell, who I haven't read, I probably will read at least one of her novels. Now, I'll probably read Cranford because that's a short one. I've got that one and North and South and one other, I think. Um, I don't know when I'll get to it, but... And she uses a lot of it in this. Uh, this this first volume goes up through the uh, publication of the Bronte sisters' first book of poetry, or only book of poetry, I guess. And then I guess, and the second one will cover uh, her. Uh, her, the rest of her literary career, of Charlotte's literary career, all the all the the main three sisters are still alive at the end of Volume One. Um, book starts out with a a nice description of of the town and the little church where uh, the Bronte family lived, uh, leading up to the grave sites and this is kind of a, a very powerful passage very powerful way to open the book i mean if you know already you know but i'll read a little bit of it here uh, the description goes up to the uh there are neither brass nor altar terms nor monuments but there's a mural table at the right hand side of the communion table this is the interior of the church in their town here lies the remains of Maria Bronte, wife of the Reverend P. Bronte, A.B. Minister of Hawthorne. Her soul departed to the Savior September 15th, 1821, in the 39th year of her age. That's Maria Bronte, uh, Charlotte's sister. Charlotte's mother. Uh, also, here lie the remains of Maria Bronte, daughter of the aforesaid, now, this is Charlotte's sister. She died on the 6th of May, 1825, in the 12th year of her age. And of Elizabeth Bronte, her, her sister, who died June 15th, 1825, in the 11th year of her age. There's um, another biblical passage then. Here also lies the remains of Patrick Branwell Bronte, known as Branwell, who died September 24th, 1848, aged 30 years. And of Emily Jane Bronte, author of Wuthering Heights, who died December 19th, 1848, aged 29 years, son and daughter of the Reverend P. Bronte incumbent. This stone also dedicated to the memory of Anne Bronte, author of Tenant and Wildfell Hall, youngest daughter of the Reverend P. Bronte. She died aged 27 years, May 28th, 1849, and was buried in the old church of Scarborough. And adjoining and then there is, it goes to another tablet. Adjoining lie the remains of Charlotte, Charlotte Bronte, wife of the Reverend Arthur Bell Nichols, A.B., and daughter of the Reverend P. Bronte, A.B., incumbent. She died March 31st, 1855, in the 39th year of her age. All right, so there you've got Charlotte Bronte lived the, there was five siblings. There's three, four, five, there were six siblings, three uh, three girls who lived into adulthood, two uh, girls who died in childhood, one son, Branwell, who died in early adulthood, and the mother, who died at the same age as, as her longer surviving daughter, both Charlotte and her mother, Maria, died at age 39. And then, of course, is left the reverend, the father of all the Bronte uh, sisters, who outlived all his children, and was blind or nearly blind. He's he's at the point I'm at in the book now. He's all he's almost blind. So it's quite a powerful way to start a biography. You know, I mean, we know that all these people died young. This family all died young. This great family of of writers. 
and we know the troubles that uh, Branwell had, um, you know, with alcohol and things that led to his early death. Uh, but just to, to put it all up front like that, it's very moving. And then we go into her life. Uh, uh, Gaskell uses a lot of uh, letters to and from uh, Charlotte Bronte, back and forth to different people, They, uh, you know, to talk about their early life and time that they spent, that Charlotte and Emily spent uh, in Brussels, which was well, you know, which was a, a, a big source of, a uh, big creative source of uh, Charlotte's fiction. She wrote uh, books based there. And um, it's a very moving uh, autobiography because of that sense of tragedy, that sadness that overhangs the family. But there's also a lot of joy and, and and a lot of affection between the sisters and just some very intense stuff as you can imagine there's you know scenes uh i'm kind of jumping all around here but i i definitely recommend the book i'm sure it's not the most accurate biography or complete biography because it was written by her friend and you know at the time without uh the advances of more research and all that, but I highly recommend it. It's very uh, moving, especially if you've read the the Bronte's books. This 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 goes very fast um, and gives you background on the sisters and what their lives were like and their struggles coming up. And they were pu they were self published. Uh, this 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 book of poetry that came out. The, all the three sisters Anne, Charlotte, and Emily were kind of working on their poetry all separately. When they were kids, they all wrote, wrote stories and stuff. They had a fantasy world they created and all that. And uh, as adults, uh, the three sisters and also Branwell were working on their poetry and they were writing uh, different um, poets. And I guess you could just do that in these days. Like Charlotte sends her poetry to... Robert Southey and says, hey, I'm a stranger, but I'm a fan, and just tell me what you think, and wrote her a long letter back, which is uh, interesting to read. I'll, I'll let you read it for yourself. It's uh, got some, um, got some advice for her and some, some rather condescending uh, kind of uh, warnings too, and, but they, they ended up developing, being a friendship anyway, and, um, Branwell sent his uh, poetry to, I think, to Wordsworth or something, but uh, never got a reply. But um, then they, the three sisters got their, their poems together when they, they saw that each other were, were working on the poetry separately, and they decided to put a collection together, and they wrote to a publisher and asked how much it would cost and that. So they, um, you know, and they... It did a lot of things you hear about indie people doing today. You know, they priced it all out and they figured out how much they could spend on advertising and all that. And I haven't got to when they started uh, publishing their novels yet. Um, I don't know if they did the same route with that or, or if they went through uh, uh, what today we'd call a legacy publisher. But the poems were not a success. Um, you know, it has a happy ending as far as uh, literature is concerned because obviously... Well, at least two or three of their novels are, are wild successes, Wuthering Heights and 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 Villette, and of course um, uh, Jane Eyre. Uh, I've read everything except Villette by all the three sisters, and I keep putting off reading Villette because I don't want it to be the last one. I really, I don't really care for Anne Bronte. Um, first part of Ten and Wildfell Hall is kind of interesting, but. It just gets sappy and, and preachy. Um, but from what I gather, she wrote it as, as kind of a, Anne wrote it as a kind of a corrective to Emily's book, Withering Heights, which is Wild, Wild, Wildfell Hall and Withering Heights have the same initials, I guess. Um, it's interesting to read about this family. You know, they, had, they weren't uh, poor, but they, they had money. You know, money was always an issue you know, in terms of uh, what they could do in their lives and they wanted to travel and things they weren't able to do. And, and yeah, I am enjoying it very much. 
I guess that's all I have to say about it. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I'll follow up with the second half. I just want to recommend this book to anybody who's interested in the Brontes or interested in Victorian or um, mid-19th century fiction anyway. I give it a thumbs up, and we'll talk soon.